I'd rather not just because of what it means in, in Spanish. What it means? Fuck it. Chinga tu madre is the bad word. Just like a slang? Yeah, chinga tu madre is fuck it, I'm gonna do it. And chinga tu madre is like fuck your mom. Oh yeah, it's su madre is different then. Let me yeah. see on your shirt the way it's... Okay, yeah, I can do that. Chinga su madre media is on right now. Yeah. Keep it real, keep it real, keep it real. <laughs>about yourself when it comes to life in general, you know? And it gives you, it gives you a creative outlet. And I think any time that you're being creative, that's an expression that comes from what I would call God, because when we talk about God, anybody that has an understanding of a higher power, especially indigenous people, we call God the creator. Okay, so if you're being creative, you're attached to that higher power to which I would call God and so for me to go out and play music to surf to skateboard all the things that I do that are creative that's God's will for me and it's for me to do it well it's just a gift you know it's something that you you cannot be um, I try not to claim too much responsibility for my own success you know what I'm saying yeah. the 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 the, the grace that comes with being a good skateboarder comes from having a relationship and an understanding that there's something bigger than me that I have no control over. So all that I can do as a skateboarder is try to conform and, and use all those elements to be creative. Like there's a lot of things that I'm using to be a good skateboarder and these are things that are given to us for free but we have to learn how to use them constructively, you know. And especially how dangerous skateboarding is. You know, if you go to certain cities and you're just skateboarding thinking that there's no danger out there, you're in for a big surprise because things can happen really fast. You know, steep, down, dangerous, you know, down dangerous terrain, uh, security, cars, other obstacles like, you know, places where you could fall off the edge of something. And, you know, it's easy to make something difficult look graceful if you practice it enough and you refine your technique. But there's also the liabilities. You know, a lot of people get hurt. Tony Hawk just broke his leg, like and the leg didn't heal right. He has to have it broken again and go in and have another surgery done. See, like, supposedly, according to the media and everybody in the world, Tony Hawk's the best skateboarder in the world. He's not impervious to having his leg broken in half. You know what I'm saying? So shit happens. And I'm not saying anything bad about Tony Hawk personally. I'm just telling you that nobody is God in the skateboarding world. Nobody, including me, of course. It, it depends, it depends. I mean, certain days um, I just skate and certain days I just surf. But the best days are when you surf and skate the same day. Um, as I get older, surfing's a little bit easier because it's not as high impact because you're falling on water instead of concrete. And I like the paddling part and being in nature. But skateboarding um, is still really important to me because not only is it a part of my identity, I, I think it has a lot to do with actually why I'm even here and why I exist in this human form was because I was destined to be the skateboarder that helped 
revolutionize skateboarding and to show um, a technique that was different from before my time, but to also introduce the attitude that I carry to the modern skateboarders. Basically just to carry my experience into the next generation of skateboarders. Oh, I, I love Jay, but see, Jay had a lot of the same problems that I had. He had problems with drugs, you know, instead of alcohol. And uh, he paid for it. He ended up doing crazy shit that got him in trouble. He ended up in prison. Eventually, he got out of prison. And um, he lived a good life in the end of his days because he was surfing and trying to stay clean, you know, and sober. And it was not easy for him. It was, it was, it was a battle. But I think in his last days, he was very happy. He was surfing. He was happily married. He had found uh, a conscious contact between him and what his, high po his higher power was. Yeah, I think it, it, wasn't a, it wasn't an unhappy ending, but it was unfortunate, you know. And um, I miss Jay because he was like a little brother to me. And I wish that I could have protected him and kept him from making some of the mistakes that he did. But, you know, um, I'm not responsible for other people's actions. I'm only responsible for my own. And the only way that I can help a person like Jay is to show through my actions what is right and what is wrong. And that's just called wisdom, you know. And wisdom comes from making mistakes. And wisdom comes from having intuition. Like, intuitively, I know what is right and what's wrong. Do I still make bad decisions? Fuck yeah, I still make bad decisions, dude. I'm not a saint, you know. I'm not Jesus Christ. I'm just a, a human being, you know. And I'm going to make bad decisions sometimes. But the main thing is, one day at a time, I've decided that those decisions will not be influenced by things outside of me. My decisions come from the inside out. So it's a spiritual decision, what I, the decisions that I make. And it comes from intuition. And it comes from being older, having a sense of like, um, love and tolerance for other people because sometimes it's really hard you know there's there's some people that really i just want to go up to them and just fucking punch them in the face you know what i mean but i try not to go there you know because sometimes my words can be even more harmful than than using physical force so when i'm angry with somebody i try not to say anything harmful to them and just let them be who they are you know there's a lot of older skateboarders right now that I don't see eye to eye with, you know, because a lot of times they say things that are so harmful and so judgmental that I think that maybe they're, something's wrong with them, like they're insane or they're just stupid or whatever, you know. But it's not my job to go and tell them that I think they're full of shit or I think they're wrong. So all I try to do is the same thing that I do for the young skaters, just through my actions, show what's right, you know. Surf because I love it. Skateboard not only because it's my job, because it's good for cross training with surfing. I manufacture uh, skateboard products and sell them all over the world. I play bass guitar in a really good band with another professional skateboarder named Ray Barbie. So we're constantly writing music and rehearsing and then playing shows all over the world. Um, these are the things that I do that are positive. These are the things that I do that can help others. These are the things that I do to be the person that God always wanted me to be. And this is why I'm here today. You know, I'm 65 years old. You know, I just uh, had to deal with some major difficulties in my life due to age and just wear and tear of the body. You know, um, I had a, I had a, like an outpatient surgery like two months ago on, um, I had to have like a little, a procedure done on the lower abdomen part of my body. And man, it was fucking painful. And it made me angry because I wanted to be out surfing. I wanted to be out skateboarding and I couldn't. Physically, I could not do it, man. I could barely get out of bed and go to the bathroom, you know, for like the first week. But I made it through it by just doing it one day at a time. I just was like, you know what? This is gonna pass. I just have to do the right thing. And just for today, 
So what if just for today I cannot surf or skate? I'm going to do the things that are right. So I just did the healthy thing. I did the wise thing. And in Japanese, they have a word for the martial arts. It's called Aikido. Well, Aikido means using somebody else's energy or nature's energy to deflect anything that's going to harm you. So in English, the description of Aikido is the path of least resistance. So I had a Japanese friend say to me when I was recovering, she said to me, she goes, well, you know where you're at right now, right? And I go, no, where, where the fuck am I? You know, like, where am I at? You tell me, Momo, where am I? And she said, you're in Aikido. And she goes, you know what Aikido is, right? And I said, yeah, kind of. And she goes, it's the path of least resistance. And I was just like, ding. I was going, that's the fucking key. I was like, I'm going to stay in the path of least resistance and avoiding difficulties and obstacles, you know, and the only way you can do it is by being patient and patience is wisdom. Okay. Just like I said with Tony Hawk, what happened with Tony Hawk? No patience. Therefore he lost his wisdom. He went out skateboarding before he was ready. His leg now like a lightning bolt. They're like, we have to cut into your leg and break it again. See, so even a guy, one of the greatest in the world, is still learning from mistakes and similar to me. But when she told me to take the path of least resistance, I was like, I can do that. I was willing at that point to like be, I can do this. I'm just going to take the path of least resistance. So, which brings us to today, me being here with you guys. The only reason I'm here in Mexico is because I'm taking that path because they asked me at headquarters, like a month ago, they said, and I knew I wasn't going to be able to skateboard when I came here. And I was like, fuck, I can't go to fucking Mexico, man. I was there a year ago and I was skating and, and I was ripping, man. It was like, it was on. I go, I can't go and do that. And I just thought about it and I go, yes, you can do that, bro. Cause it's not about you. It's about the kids in Mexico and your fans and your family there. It's like, just go and be like an ambassador and go and be a real leader and show that no matter how much pain you're, you're experiencing, that you can still stay strong. And that's how I ended up here, man. I haven't skated one day when I've been here, but you know what? And do I miss it? Yeah, I miss it. But is it the most important thing on my mission here? Fuck no, man. It's not that important. What's important for me is to come here and be a true leader and to show that patience is wisdom, to show that humility is strength, to show that this is a funny one and it kind of goes with like with Mexican culture, that my ego is not my amigo. You know what I mean? And I'm, I'm here to be like a big brother, a father, and just a, uh, a messenger, you know, that's really, this is really the reason why I'm here with you guys is because I'm just here to share what I've learned in life. And hopefully the next time I'll be here, I, I actually will be surfing or skating. I'm sure I'll be playing music because that's part of my life. And I love sharing that. And this is where it all comes from, you know, because if I'm not willing to admit that I'm powerless sometimes to other things, then I can't really be that person that is truly graceful. I have to show that I have weaknesses. I have character defects and shortcomings sometimes, and I'm still trying to get over them and deal with them. And that's about it, really. Um, there's a really important um, part of something that I do spiritually, and in the morning is I, I do some prayers that help me get in conscious contact with, with who I really am. And uh, the part of one of the prayers that I really love is it says, um, relieve me of the difficulties that I may overcome them and, be, and bear witness to them of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. So getting over difficulties and showing people that I can get through difficulties really bears witness to everybody outside of me that spiritual strength is probably the most important thing in our lives and that if we can receive this level of consciousness before we die this is the true goal in life and being a skateboarder is part of that 
because as skateboarders, we are really tough on the outside, but sometimes the inside is the place that really needs work. And so it's an inside job. So when we get to that point, it's just gonna make us stronger on the outside too. You know what I'm saying? And it'll give us more longevity. Who would have ever thought that there would be a 65 year old professional skateboarder? like 30, 40 years ago. Fucking nobody. So if I can continue to do what I'm doing, I'm doing basically a, a good job, you know? And, and my job is to just continue to show people that refining your technique and learning the fundamentals of skateboarding is really important. And don't worry about being the best guy out there every day and having like uh, everybody uh, worship you because it's it's not about that it's really about being one of and being a part of something that's the bigger picture you know? the thing for me is just i get a lot of admiration and compliments every day in my life but i don't let them go to my head and make me think that i'm terminally unique the best thing to do is when somebody gives you a compliment is just to take it in and give it back and to thank people for that. So like water or blood or anything else, it just needs to keep flowing. And so you can do that with a lot of different things. We can do it with our money, we can do it with our time, we can do it with just a smile or a word of good cheer to somebody. And that's how I live my life now. It's my, my life is lived on a level of like, relieve me of the bondage of self. What can I do for somebody else today, you know? And I try, and I'm not perfect at it, and some days I'm not willing to do that. But today, today I'm willing to do that. He's quick to judge people yeah. like us. For many, many years, mass, mass, the mass media and society, they looked at skateboarders as fucking criminals. You know, we were breaking the law, we're drug addicts, we're like bikers, you know, like we drink too much, you know, like we're... You know what I mean? Yes. And I think that stereotype has, it, it needs to be shattered, but it's been changed a lot, especially since things like having it in the Olympics and stuff. Am I a huge advocate of the Olympics? No, because I feel like the people that are making the money and, and getting all of the attention because skateboarding is so popular are not using it constructively. And they're not giving back to skateboarding. They're just yeah. taking. So for me, the Olympics is, you know, I could live with, I did a t-shirt that said, they need us more than we need them. I stick to that. Yeah. I think the Olympics needs skateboarding more than skateboarding needs the Olympics. But is, is there, are, there some good, are there some good things that came out of us being in the Olympics? Fuck yeah. Especially being in Japan, man. The kids that won were the fucking Japanese kids. You know how much power that gave skateboarding in a, conservative country like Japan and that creates a lot of opportunities for us as professional skateboarders you know we can make a living man we can do a tour we can sell products we can endorse products we can and then it's just not about a guy like Tony Hawk anymore yeah. it's about all of us you know If you can share your experience with others and it can be a positive influence on their lives, especially something as simple as the, funda the fundamentals of skateboarding because all, a lot of those countries are third world countries and skateboarding is not that advanced there yet. So to teach them the simple basics of skateboarding and to let them enjoy it and to see a smile on their face, really important because you can save somebody's life if you wanna know the truth. Because a lot of these kids, if they don't have that, then they're gonna go out and like in Rio, you know, get a gun and join the gangs in the favela. Or in Africa, they're gonna go and join some crazy, you know, like some people that live in the jungle and just wait for a reason to come out and like, you know, and, and kill other people, even their own people. So there's a lot of issues in the world that are to be dealt with. And to, pe to people that um, don't have something in their life like skateboarding, there's a lot of other avenues and temptation to do the wrong thing. So, and I'm not saying that it has to do with just third world countries and just people of brown or black skin. It has to do with every race, every creed, every color, and all religions and all kinds of people. You know, and I just think that women need to be respected and fought for lately. 
especially in countries like Africa and in, in the Middle East, all over the world. And this is something like, you know, when you see like all these young girls with the uh, hijab on and, you know, they're out skateboarding and stuff like that. I mean, who would have thought that that would ever happen in our lifetime and stuff? But look at the joy that it gives these women, you know, and, and thank God that they have something like this. And anybody that tells them that it's not right and it's not womanly and that's not feminine to do that shit, they can go fuck off and, you know, just like basically like, you know, just ignore those kind of influences. Because those people, they don't understand skateboarding then, if that's what they're telling these girls. So I think it's important for, for the whole world, and especially people like that, that are downtrodden, that are trying to be held down by the system. It was like rock star. It was, that was rock star shit, man. That's like at that time, I had to just be like living like a crazy fucking rock star. But you know, I had guys that I made the boards with that knew how to make a good board. And I promoted it right. And I went out and I started doing tours and I made a lot of money selling skateboards. You know, so at that time, it was something really new and new and different. But I burned out on it after a while, even though I still make really good skateboards and I make them in the United States. They're made out of quality products and I believe in them and I put my name and my logo on them. But the bottom line was, I got to a point in my life where that wasn't new and different anymore. And what became new and different for me is how I live now and that's clean and sober. Same thing as starting a skateboard company at 19. At 49, I decided to quit drinking and using drugs. Okay, that was my second revolution in my life. The first one was at 19 and the other one was 39 years later or whatever, like 19, 29, 39, 40. 30 years later, I decided to do something like what I did at 19. I was gonna try something new and different. And that's where I'm at now. I have 16 years clean. So I'm still doing something new and different, just like Alva Skateboards did when I was 19 years old. So that's it, you know? You just, you gotta fucking know when something's not working for you anymore, you know? And try not to blame it all on other people, places, and things. Take responsibility for your own shit, you know? Yeah. And it's hard because to be honest with yourself, sometimes it's painful, man. And it's true to me, you know? If I can be honest with myself, with y'all, and with God, I have, I have a chance. I have a chance to be a really good person and to live a healthy and a happy life. And that's what I do today. And I'm sure I'm gonna be skateboarding and, and I know I'll be surfing next week when I get home. You know, I'm sure I'll be skateboarding again soon. And am I you know, gonna go out and try to learn to do a, a 720 on the mega ramp? I don't think so. <laughs> but I'm definitely gonna go out and do what I do best. And that's probably, you know, just skate like I love to compare skateboarding to birds flying and uh, there's a really cool mantra that I try to keep in my head when I'm having a good day skateboarding and it, and it just goes as the birds fly so shall I so that's what I'm gonna do I'll just go out and fly so it's nice it's easy if, if you just if you keep it simple it's really easy it's really, it's really cool. Thanks, Hannah. You're, you're welcome.